Danganronpa, the game series in which you and 15 other students are trapped in a strange location, and the only way out is to murder someone else and get away with the crime. Each chapter, you have to solve your classmate's murder via a class trial in order to point the finger at the true culprit and survive to see another day. I've seen several ranking videos about this franchise, from the characters, to the games, to the trials themselves. But one ranking I don't see very often is, well, the gameplay elements of Danganronpa. And the gameplay is comprised of a series of mini-games that take place over the course of those class trials. So, today, I'm going to be ranking every mini-game in Danganronpa to see which ones come out on top. This is going to be a fairly opinionated list, since what I enjoy about a minigame, someone else might find frustrating or annoying, and vice versa. But I'll do my best to explain my reasoning for each placement. Before we start, I'm going to lay down some ground rules. I am only going to be including minigames that are featured in class trials. This means nothing for Ultra Despair Girls or the anime. This also excludes bonus or side modes and things like the casino games in V3. In order to qualify for this list, a mechanic must have a unique name and cannot be a direct subset of another minigame. So, unfortunately, this means no perjury, no absorbing statements, things like that. So, without further ado, ready those truth bullets and let's get started. At the bottom of the list is arguably the most forgettable minigame Danganronpa has ever had. Seriously, it wasn't until I replayed V3 that I even remembered Mine Mine was a thing. In it, you're asked a question and potential answer choices are concealed behind a wall of colored blocks. All you have to do to complete it is click on these colored squares and it'll clear every square of that color while changing the color of adjacent squares. Supposedly, this means that there's some level of strategy but in execution, this game is an absolute pushover. Yeah, there's a time penalty for having to break a single square, but it's never actually a challenge to beat this one. Especially since you don't have to clear the entire board, just expose the answer choice you want to pick. Plus, it's just so boring. The music isn't anything special, and it just seems like a game I'd find on my grandma's old computer. Nothing memorable combined with boring gameplay easily puts this one at the bottom for me. Hangman's Gambit is certainly a contentious minigame, and the first version is the worst for me. In Hangman's Gambit, you have to select letters in the right order to spell out a word that the game wants you to figure out. This complaint will extend to all three versions of the minigame, and that's that sometimes the word they ask you to spell is just ridiculous. And this version is just way too simple for my liking. All you have to do is wait for the letter you want to show up, then click it a few times. That's all. It's nothing special, and that's why it's so low on this list. I won't spend too much time on this one as I just talked about why this minigame is not great. The only real difference between this and 1.0 is that you can only see the letters when a light shines over them. This comes in waves or in the form of a player-controlled spotlight. This adds a little more challenge and player agency, and it gives it a slight edge over 1.0. The best way I can describe Psych Taxi is like a simpler version of Logic Dive. In it, the protagonist drives the titular Psych Taxi to pick up these Mario Kart-esque letter boxes to reveal a question. Then, you have to choose the right answer to pick up the correct lady and repeat. There's nothing particularly wrong with this minigame, it just doesn't do much that hasn't been done better before. That said, I do really like the aesthetic of this one a lot and any driving simulator game earns a few bonus points in my book. This one is about as standard of a game as you can get. 
In it, you place panels in the correct spot to recreate a comic book that goes over the events of the case and summarizes it for both the player and the cast. It's incredibly easy and simple, but the original art for it and the motion comic style are very pretty, and it's incredibly satisfying to see every piece you've gathered over the course of the trial come together in one cohesive story. Okay, this one's probably going to turn a few heads. Why would I rank Hangman's Gambit 2.0 over the other versions, even a couple other minigames, albeit only very slightly? And to be perfectly honest, this minigame is absolutely insane. Unlike the other two versions, you can't let the letters touch each other, otherwise they explode and you take damage. Thus, you have to use your concentration meter to freeze them or move them around so they won't float into each other. Don't get me wrong, I'm well aware that this is ridiculous and can ruin a lot of people's trial scores, and that's more than a valid reason to hate this one. But for me, there's just something comical about how chaotic it is that I can't help but find more enjoyment in it than the others. Now we're getting into the rhythm games. Every trial ends with some sort of breakdown in which a character, usually the killer, refuses to back down on a point. To wear them down, you have to defeat them in a rhythm-based minigame, and the first iteration of this was the bullet time battle in Trigger Happy Havoc. I think the concept is very fun, but this is the weakest of the iterations in my opinion. It's as standard as they come, nothing wrong with it, but it lacks some of the elements that I enjoy in later versions. Speaking of those, Panic Talk Action from Danganronpa 2 improves on a couple of things from its predecessor. I think showing the character in a courtroom instead of this disco void thing makes it feel like more personal of a confrontation. Breaking down shields floating around them is also way cooler than just wearing down an influence bar in the corner. The best new addition for me was the final blow. Instead of shooting a truth bullet, you have to form a sentence by selecting fragments in the right order. It's very satisfying, even if it can lead to some funny incorrect answers. But for me, I feel very similar about these two mini games, which is why they're right next to each other on the list, even though this one has the slight edge. The one that started it all. This mini game is the heart and soul of Danganronpa Trials. The students all go around and talk about an aspect of the case, and some phrases will be highlighted as potential weak points. Using your evidence, represented as truth bullets, you have to shoot contradictory statements down with the right bullet to progress the argument. There's a reason that this minigame is the staple of the franchise's gameplay. It's incredibly fun, and later additions, such as absorbing statements, white noise, and perjury, keep it fresh enough that it doesn't get too stale or repetitive. The shatter effect is satisfying, and the counter pop-up and shout really make it feel like you're taking charge of the discussion. It's incredibly solid and definitely deserves a spot up here on the list. Now that we're in the top five, these are minigames that I genuinely look forward to every time they show up and the first of those is Danganronpa 2's Logic Dive. What I really like about this one is the gameplay of it. Unlike Psych Taxi, you can actually fall off of the course in this one, ironically making it feel more like Mario Kart than Psych Taxi does. I think this adds an extra element of stakes, especially if you already know the answer to the questions or find that part too easy. It also just looks really cool. It reminds me of a retro video game with the sharp edges and bright colors. V3 added a good handful of new minigames, and this is one of the best ones. A variation of non-stop debate, in which multiple characters talk over each other, and you have to listen to all three to find the connection in the chaos. This is a perfect evolution of non-stop debate. It adds an extra layer of challenge while also contributing to the trial's atmosphere 
and giving more characters a chance to contribute to the conversation. It also makes narrative sense. Sometimes things get heated, and discussions won't always be people politely waiting to talk one by one. I really don't have any complaints about this minigame. It does exactly what it sets out to be, and it does it amazingly. This minigame addition to Danganronpa 2 seems so natural, it's honestly surprising to me they didn't think of it during the first game. In Rebuttal Showdown, one character interjects in the middle of our argument to face you one-on-one -on -one in a battle of words. Many of my compliments about mass panic debate carry over to this minigame, but what sets it above for me is the fact that it's fully its own thing, with unique sword-based gameplay that's pretty fun to line up and cut through. In non-stop debates, you only get to shoot the weak spots, but here, we get to slice through everything, including the filler words. This provides a sense of constant progression, which is amplified by the visuals, where the screen literally shifts side to side to represent who is winning the argument. It's awesome, and so is this minigame. I'm sure this isn't much of a surprise. Debate Scrum is a fan favorite from what I've seen, and for good reason. In it, the students are divided into two teams over a point and argue back and forth about it. You have to match up the talking points to create one cohesive argument and prove why your side is correct. Every character gets an original side-facing sprite, and the whole courtroom shifts to a new area, making this minigame feel much grander than the others. Not to mention the music. For me, Debate Scrum has the best track of any minigame, and it's not even close. It's also nice to have other students argue with you on your side, because in the other minigames, it's only the protagonist against everyone else. It really feels like a group discussion, and this minigame definitely deserves its popularity and spot as runner-up on this list. At number one, my favorite minigame in all of Danganronpa is the Argument Armament. And I'm sure you're wondering why. Why would I put this minigame at number one when I ranked the other rhythm games together much lower? And, well, it's for a few reasons. Firstly, I always thought the rhythm games had the potential to be the best minigames in the series. The culprit breakdown is one of the most satisfying parts of any mystery game cornering the culprit after bringing all the evidence against them to light. The other two minigames didn't quite do it for me in that regard, but Argument Armament nearly perfects it. The dialogue feels much more like a conversation to me than past breakdown minigames, and the addition of a proper themed background really helps set the atmosphere for this final showdown. And, unlike the other versions, this one has unique character art and outfits that break down as you progress, giving a very satisfying visual. The final blow returns from the last iteration too, tying the whole thing together. Argument Armament is the perfect representation of the protagonist versus someone who just won't listen, and the emotion it evokes is some of the most powerful moments in V3. And that's my personal ranking of the Danganronpa minigames. It was fun to put together my first list video like this, it really made me think about the minigames in depth and what did and didn't work in them for me. Let me know in the comments what your ranking would be. I'd love to hear other opinions. Thanks for watching, and see you all next time.